Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some content creators who are still building their production robots out of wood. Of course, they're trying to market to their audience the affiliate links to do the same. That being said, their poor choices do not stop there in that, of course, they're not following best practice when building their controllers as well. So my goal is to save you guys as much time and headache and especially money to make sure that you do it right the first time. Let's jump right in. Now, as it came time to clamp on at the opposite end, I made sure to pull down extremely tightly on the belts, tensioning them enough to about, let's call it an A note. I, like many of you, love when content creators are not afraid to tell you how they're getting their content. You can see exactly what this shirt says on this content creator who created this original video of building his CNC router out of wood. Then we go back to, oh, about a week, week and a half ago, when I did a video on a guy building his CNC router out of MDF and wood glue and Arduinos. And you guys can see for yourself an identical belt drive transmission. So the question here is, is it true what this guy's shirt says? It absolutely is. Many of these content creators just copy one another and then do the affiliate links. And once again, You've got that magical combination for a CNC disaster if you follow what you're seeing here. With the shelf now complete, I can start laying out all the electronics. Everything gets simply screwed down to the board, making sure to not over tighten anything. So in green and black, what we see is the four driver boards. In blue, we see in the middle, that's the controller which plugs into the driver boards as well as the computer. On the right in gray, we have the 24 volt power supply. The control board, I simply use. So the content creator is mounting all of his electronics on an MDF board, which as many of you already know, is a massive fire hazard. This is something that I don't know where this came from. I don't know why these guys are continuously doing it. To invest in the proper metal electronics enclosure is definitely going to be worth its weight in gold, mainly because of safety. And because of course, as I've stated in many previous videos, God forbid something ever happens. You are then using the proper substrate for an electrical enclosure. Number one, it would be up to code. And number two, if an insurance inspector ever came in, God forbid that there was a fire, you would get paid. Think about what I'm saying. I do not know why these guys continuously are doing this. I don't know why it's slipping through the cracks. And now, of course, YouTube's algorithm is getting smarter, but we need to be smart as a community and look at this and say this is bullshit. It should not be seen online where a guy is promoting using wood at all around his electronics to encapsulate them. Again, the other thing is to keep in mind that when these guys build these ultra low budget systems, they always try to cut corners on the power supplies, typically the voltage. We see here he's using a 24 volt power supply. You always want to use the largest voltage power supply you can. Why is that? Because the resolution of your steppers are much sharper the higher voltage you use. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about you using what's known as overdrive ration. Gecko talks about this on their website. It allows for more speed going to the steppers because again, voltage equals speed. The byproduct is heat. So keep that in mind. But overall, a larger voltage power supply is optimal. I'm putting here overdrive ration on the screen so you guys can read about it and understand how it works and what the actual formula is so you do not overdrive your steppers to the point of overheating them to failure. If you stay within the overdrive ration formula at roughly 25 times the steppers rated voltage, you'll be golden. All the electronics, including the computer, are mounted underneath, so I need access. So this is another moment that really has to be seen to be believed. Right now you're looking at the opening shot to what his shop looks like on the inside. And if you pay close attention, you're going to see some dust on the floor. Every woodworking shop has sawdust present. When you begin grinding and sparks are shooting everywhere, the odds of having that sawdust or wood around you combust is very, very high. 
Just to be clear, because a lot of guys may not even know this, sawdust is combustible. It can actually float. So looking at this video, and once again, understanding the gravity of what these guys are showing online for you to follow, and believe you me, many people do follow these people, it's terrifying. Because what's really interesting, and a lot of guys don't even think about this, bring it up again. If, God forbid, a fire started and got out of control, because of course he's right there, the insurance company would not only inspect the area where the fire started, but they would also review the YouTube content that this guy just created and see the video that actually instigated the fire. Let me ask you another question. Do you think he's going to get paid? Right, I'm going to fast forward this video so you guys don't get bored, but rest assured what he's doing right now is actually building an electronics enclosure, not just for his CNC electronics, but also for his PC. Now this is a question I get asked myself at least 10 to 15 times a week of end users asking for my recommendation on doing this. Is it recommended? Is it not recommended? I would be very cautious about building an electronics enclosure because you need to understand the cooling aspect of that electronics enclosure and of course it should be made out of the proper substrate which is metal and not wood. Using a couple spacer blocks at the same height on both sides, I can then drop in the shelf with all the electronics in it. Once the shelf was seated properly, I drove in two screws on either side, one into the leg, one into the dividing wall. A total of six things get plugged into the power bar. The fan, the computer, the computer monitor, the 12 volt adapter for the relay coil, the 24 volt DC power supply, and the power from the router which goes through the relay. I then installed four magnet latches all around the door in order to keep the door closed. Well, the content creator is trying naturally to save time. Time is money to him. He's got to get this video done. He covers briefly to his audience what he's doing. He figures they, they get it. They understand what's going on. Let's look at this in the proper amount of detail it requires, okay? He stated that six components are plugged into his power bar. Interesting. One of those six components is his spindle motor. Interesting. The spindle motor naturally draws the most amount of amps. And we're not talking a CNC spindle. No, no, no. That uses the proper double shielded cabling. We're talking about a wood router from a box store that doesn't use any shielding on the cable at all. So it spews EMI all over. Big deal. Fact of the matter is why you would ever plug a spindle motor into a power bar sharing all the critical electronics the pc and the cnc electronics makes no logical sense let me explain when that spindle motor is cutting you will see its amperage go up and down based on the cuts and depth it's making so what essentially will happen to any components attached to that power bar is they're receiving spikes constantly because again, the amps are going up, they're going down, and you have the potential for stability issues, which of course shouldn't be a problem with a CNC robot. The thing you guys need to keep in mind also, the most critical detail he missed was what power rating that power bar has, meaning in watts and amps. Why do I say that? Because if he exceeds the power rating, number one, you're going to have a major safety issue on top of the safety issue he has with using flammable substrate for an enclosure. But then you also have a safety issue in that now you're overloading this component because you're drawing too many amps. And on top of the system being inherently unstable, you now have a major fire hazard. But what, once again, these details are overlooked. It's not going to hurt you, the audience, is it? This guy cares about you. He wants the best for you. He wants to keep your budget as cheap as possible, even if it does potentially burn down your shop. Oh, well, one more thing, just to clarify, because I know those people are out there that like to leave comments like, hey, he's just learning. Don't be hard on him. He just didn't have the time or the money to really invest and do this right. He was trying to make a point that you could just build these units at a much cheaper price. Keep in mind that this content creator made an update video, like many of them do, you can see right here, where he decided to change the smaller spindle motor that he had, which was a wood router, 
to a larger box door wood router, which is a Makita. On top of the fact, and this is icing on the cake, he decided to install a laser to do laser cutting. And once again, his router is made out of wood. Sound like a good idea? Is this guy still learning? I'll let you guys decide. The machine. Let's start from left to right. On the left here, we see the power bar, which is going to provide the 120 volts AC for the entire thing. The first thing plugged into it is some flying leads, which go over to our 24 volt DC power supply. This power supply feeds the 24 volts on each of the driver boards for the stepper motors. As you can see, it's wired up line, neutral, and ground your black, white, and green wires respectively. So all you need to do on the output side is hook up a wire from 24 volts, follow it to the 24 volts on the driver board and daisy chain it between it. The common, same thing over to the common and daisy chain it down to each board. The next thing plugged in is just the power for the PC. My PC is an old Dell and the reason for this is it can be a dedicated computer and it also has a parallel port on the back which is how the 5-axis CNC breakout board is operated through a parallel port. You can get other boards that are operated through USB. This is what I went with. The PC has two cables coming out of it. The parallel cable, which is plugged into the parallel port on the breakout board, and the back of the motherboard on the PC, and a USB-A male-to-male cable, which provides 5 volts to the board. Next up, we have simply plugged in the PC monitor. Well, the content creator gives you a nice image of his wiring diagram for this system. And like many content creators perform, they all copy the same thing. They just cover general hookups. This wire goes from here. This wire goes to here. This plug goes from here. This plugs into this outlet. That's what they consider to be a wiring diagram. But I have to ask the question, if it was that easy, how come there's so many posts on forums? because it's not. You need detail. You need to understand what cables you're using as far as them being the proper double shielded cables to mitigate both forms of EMI and make sure that your signals are protected. You need to make sure that the system is properly grounded for safety number one and also to make sure that that EMI, that excess energy in the air, has a place to be properly dissipated. When we see here a guy taking a picture of an enclosure that he's proud of making, while it looks like a nice, neat enclosure, what he's failing to realize is making a box that is housing electronics means that the electronics need to be properly cooled. He never covered anything about this Hampton Bay's pedestal fan that he mounted inside of here and repurposed as far as its CFM rating to make sure that the air volume going out of this enclosure is proper to keep everything cool because he can't. There's no way he can do it. And that's why I say you cannot cut corners with engineering. When you start cutting corners with your own engineering and you make you and your family and anyone else around you at risk, that is where you should be questioning your ability. Unfortunately, this gentleman doesn't have that. He would rather put a video up because he knows his audience is gonna view it. He's gonna get paid from it. And until YouTube catches up, and I'm sure it will, you are gonna see these kinds of videos posted. He openly admits to daisy chaining, where I've stated in many previous videos, I'm gonna put it on screen right here, of what Gecko states about using daisy chaining. It is not best practice, because of course, if one component fails, multiple components can have issues. This is common sense. This is something that somebody who's worked with electronics would see. He doesn't understand it. And once again, the beauty of these type of videos, when guys say, hey, I wanna take it upon myself to do it, then do it right if you're going to be a teacher. If you're not going to be a teacher, you shouldn't be on YouTube showing what you did. You make the video of building the chassis and using it yourself, acting as if you're an authority. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. You wouldn't want these people teaching your kids. If you think about it from that logic, why would you want to learn from this person? Right guys, I want to set this clip up to give you guys the gravity of what's going on here. The content creator installed new linear rails in an upgrade for this system. He then set up the dial indicator to look for twist on his x-axis as he's seeing if everything is running symmetrical with his y. So what he finds here is super interesting and you have to ask yourself like I did, why would you release plans or any type of affiliate links for this machine if what you found here was not first told 
to your audience. So they're well aware of it because guys that are novice may not think ahead and just purchase the plans and then find out exactly what he did. Just as we discussed in many other previous videos where guys are building CNC routers or production robots out of wood. So with our new Y-axis rails, let's see how much we can make this thing move. One, two. So we've improved from an inch and a quarter of travel to just under a quarter inch. And I can see it, it seems like it's flexing up at the top. So I don't think the linear rails are really to blame for any of this. Again, this is made out of wood and there's a little bit of flex up top, I can see. Well, he openly explained that he's obviously got some deflection on the top of his X axis. But the thing to keep in mind to all of my novice guys that say, oh, it's really not that big a deal. What he didn't cover is the fact that if you're seeing that kind of rigidity issue with deflection on your X axis, don't think for a minute that same rigidity issue doesn't follow the rest of that CNC chassis made out of wood. Okay, so keep that in mind. The most critical thing, of course, out of this whole video should be your safety. And the main thing you need to consider when building your CNC production robot is that, because it's not just you, it's your family and anyone else that's around you. These wood routers are nothing more than a huge fire hazard. So much so, I'm not gonna just say it, I'm gonna show you some more proof. Emergency, I don't think I've adequately expanded on what that means. So let me start off by saying that I too almost suffered from a rapid unscheduled conflagration. So although it really pains me to edit this video, let's dissect my near disaster. Back in January, I was cutting a batch of oak pieces for an award plaque, Project 110 for those of you keeping track. I had a stable workflow established, load a plank of wood, clamp it down, hit run, come back 40 minutes later, repeat. I got complacent. I was using two clamps, and having failed to tighten one of them sufficiently, my wooden stock began to move. As it moved, it caused the machine to lose steps. My shape boko started drifting further and further off course. Eventually, it freed itself from the stock and started moving over the open wasteboard where there was nothing in the way except for a clamp. And of course, my shape boko went straight for it. The end mill went head to head against the metal in the clamps, making a rather nice shower of sparks. Had I not had a dust boot keeping my work area clean, there would have been a high risk of ignition. 